Okay, so this video is going to be pretty complex and I will do my best to take that complexity and simplify it as best as possible. So follow along as best as you can and hopefully we can get through this. Now as the title of this video alludes to, uh, we are trying to take all of our local systems, whether that be a laptop, an iPhone, an Apple 4K TV, an iPad, or whatever it may be, and all of those devices we want to route their internet traffic to a through our OpenVPN hardware to a remote site that is running OpenVPN server. So what does that even mean? Like that's kind of hard to understand, right? So let's come up with a scenario to really explain it. So I live here in, in Alabama and I actually have a server at a friend's house in Florida. And on that server, I'm running the operating system, Unraid, that's hosting a container that is running OpenVPN server. And so what we're gonna do is all of my devices that are connected to my local Amata hardware are now going to get their internet to that, through that OpenVPN server in Florida. Is that simple enough? So that way, all of my computers and systems and iPhones and iPads, whatever it may be, appear as if they are in Florida when they are in fact here in Alabama with me and my primary residence. I think that was pretty simple. Now for the more complex part. And that's the actual configuration of everything. And that's where things are gonna get dicey. So let's start off with some caveats here, okay? So if you are trying to access a server locally or remotely, I guess. So I have a server, as I mentioned before, in Florida that I would like to access through my OpenVPN server. Well, I think there might be some sort of bug within TP-Link. So the only thing you're gonna be able to accomplish is just a pure internet tunnel and you won't be able to actually reach any devices that exist on the other end. And I'll show you what that means later on in this video. But if you came here with the intent of, let's say, having a server remotely that you have files on and that you would like to download, that's not gonna work with this setup. Now, that's not to say in the future it will work, but it's not gonna work now. So at the time of filming, my OC200 controller is on controller version 5.0.30. The firmware the OC200 is running is 1.14.3. And finally, my ER605 is running firmware version 1.2.0. So keep that in mind for anyone who watches this in the future as things may have changed and probably will have changed, um, but we'll make a video in the future once more updates are released uh, for TP-Link. So let's go ahead and get started with the entire construction and setup of this so we can see what it all looks like. Whew. Oh, sorry, just one more thing. And I'm not gonna show you guys how to fully set up a container with an Unraid running open access, open VPN access server. If you wanna see a video about that, I'd highly recommend checking out Space Invader 1's video on how to set that up with an Unraid. And for everyone else that's running open VPN access server or open VPN server, uh, you can kind of follow along and some of this was probably looking familiar to you already. Uh, or will look familiar to you already. Um, so sorry about not showing you how to set up OpenVPN server. That is an entire video on its own. And uh, that would make this video like 20 minutes long and it's already gonna be long. So sorry guys, let's go ahead and take a look anyway at my OpenVPN server setup so that way you can get at least an idea of how this is all functioning. All right, now let's get started. I'm already remotely connected to my server in Florida, and what you're seeing here on screen is the operating system called Unraid that I am remotely connected through, through a container called OpenVPN Access Server. Now, this container can probably be downloaded on any Linux distribution, um, and that's not what this video is about, is how to set that up, but this is how I'm doing it. So if we go ahead and open OpenVPN server, I'll go ahead and get logged in here with my admin account. And I've already got all this configured and working and that's how I'm like connecting to this server remotely. Um, go ahead and make a mental note of this IP range. It is 192.168.132. 
Um, other things to note is the IP address of the router is or gateway is 192.168.132.1, which I can reach. This is totally a total foreign network right now. So everything is working as it should. Now what we're gonna need to do inside of OpenVPN Access Server is create a new user specifically for the Aramata hardware. And to do that, I simply go to user management, user permissions, and I'm gonna create a new user here called Omada. I'm gonna click on allow auto login. So this way we don't have to enter in any passwords or anything. And so that way um, our TP-Link controller, I'm sorry, our Omada controller software uh, doesn't have to deal with any prompts or anything like that. It just makes it easier. I'm gonna have to click on more settings here and I will have to give it a, a password. In this case, I'm gonna set the password to be test1234. You can set it to whatever you want. We will be using the auto login profile, so it doesn't actually matter. Now, for this particular setup, I don't need to change anything else because I already have everything configured appropriately within other settings uh, within OpenVPN server itself. So I can just click on save settings and this will take a moment to create our user. I'm gonna go ahead and update my running server. And now we actually need to export the profile Omada so that way we can import it into our Omada controller software. So our account name was Omada. The password was test1234. I'm gonna sign in. And here you can see that because I selected the auto login profile, I can simply just click on this to download it and it has downloaded to my local file system. Now I need to disconnect from the OpenVPN server so we can actually configure our, OpenV our Omada hardware uh, so that way we can go ahead and access this stuff. So I'm gonna do that. Now I'm successfully disconnected. I can try and hit these IP addresses again and nothing works. So I'm definitely disconnected. Now we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and get logged into our TP-Link Omada controller software. And I'm already logged in and looking at the dashboard page. So from here, what I'm gonna to wanna to do in the left pane is look for the settings icon and then click on that. And then I'm gonna to wanna to navigate to VPN. And from here, we can create a new VPN policy. So you can name this whatever you want. I'm gonna name it Florida VPN because that's what I'll be connecting to. We're gonna do a client to site VPN, so as in, my local hardware using my ER605 router to my VPN server in Florida. For VPN type, we are going to select VPN client, open VPN because that is the software that we're running. The remote server IP address is going to be the WAN IP address of the of your remote site. So, so the IP address of the system there is going to be six nine four two one three three seven and that is the remote ip address or wan ip address of um that that was given to me from the isp in florida and the port that we're going to use is the default open vpn port which is 1194 and for the local networks this part doesn't really make sense uh, we're just going to leave it selected to all um this really doesn't do anything. I think this is expecting you to connect to other Omada hardware, but I'm not really sure. But in this case, it's kind of pointless to have. And then for WAN, we're gonna of course select our WAN port on our ER605 router or whatever Omada router you have. And then we're gonna to wanna to click on import. Now you may remember that I exported that um, configuration file earlier. That is what I'm importing now and this should import successfully. And then you can hit create and you'll, you, you will be done. Okay, so it seems to have worked and accepted our configuration, so let's go ahead and test it. Now to make sure that we have the IP address remotely, what we're gonna wanna do is Google search what is my IP. Now I can't actually show you the results for this because it'll give away my uh, remote server's IP address and I don't wanna do that, but You'll just have to take my word for it. It is the remote um, IP address. So, and as you can tell, I have access to the internet already. So we can go to sites like Reddit, 
or wherever it may be, and I have that remote server's IP address or WAN IP address. So for all intents and purposes, it looks like I'm in Florida. All right, so just opening up Google Maps really helps provide this. Um, as far as Google is aware, I am somewhere in Orlando where the server lives, which is about perfect. And uh, so that appears to be working. Now, do you remember those IP addresses I mentioned earlier? They were 192.168.132.1 for our router that is in Orlando or the gateway that's in Orlando. That is doesn't work. And if you remember the IP address of the Unraid server we were hosting everything was 132.143. And that doesn't work either. But at the very least, all of our network traffic is tunneled through the OpenVPN server that is running in Florida. Okay, so question and answer time. So you are trying to connect to your remote server and it's not working. Well, did you forward the appropriate ports on your remote networking side? So as in the router or gateway that was given to you by your ISP, on, let's say in Florida in my case, um, you're gonna have to port forward the appropriate port ports for this to work. And again, the default port is 1194. So on the remote end, I do have port 1194 forwarded, and that is the reason why I'm able to connect to it. Locally, I don't have to do any port forwarding, and by locally, I mean here in Alabama, because everything just runs local. There's no reason to open that port up because um, essentially what is happening is the remote system is listening specifically for port 1194 and nothing locally is. Um, why else might it not be working? Well, you probably put in the wrong WAN IP address. And the key here is to make sure that your remote system, in my case in Florida, has the proper WAN IP address. And if it does not, that can be something that prevents you from connecting. Other things that may prevent you connecting, the OpenVPN server configuration is not correct. I don't know how to diagnose this. I'm not sure what to look for in order to make it work. Can you use other OpenVPN servers like or server providers like NordVPN, Moldad, Private Internet Access, PIA for short, or TunnelBear, or one of the other thousands of people? Maybe? Um, I tried testing it with Molvad because that is the only VPN server provider that I have used and that I probably won't be using anymore because I don't really need to. And it doesn't really, it doesn't work with them, but that's because they split out their files really weirdly instead of just giving you one file, one configuration file. And so I haven't, I don't know how to fix that to make it work. I don't know what NordVPN does. I don't know what PIA does. I don't know what anybody else does. So it could work, but I'm not sure. Could you do this with a other Omada hardware on both ends? Uh, probably, but again, that's not something I can test because I don't have Omada equipment on the other end. So yeah, that makes things pretty complicated then, doesn't it? I can already hear you guys asking me to do this video again, but using one of the VPN providers like NordVPN, PIA, or one of the other mini VPN providers. Um, but I'm probably not going to because that costs money and that takes a lot of time to troubleshoot and figure out if things go wrong. And um, yeah, sorry in advance about that. Now what I would like to do is a site to site VPN connection where we have Amada equipment on both ends. Um, but I don't really have hardware in Florida uh, to test that with and I could probably do that with somebody out there. Uh, but I'd have to reveal my WAN IP address and I'm not really comfortable with that. Uh, no offense to anybody who'd love to help. I just, I, if I don't know you, I don't know if I can trust you, sorry. So we'll have to figure out something for that in the future. Hopefully TP-Link can send me some more equipment and I can just find a friend locally to test with. Uh, I think that would be pretty dope. But if not, then it may be a long while until we can uh, do that test. Okay, and with all that being said, again, if you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to drop a comment below and I will do my best to answer them. And I want to thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time. Peace.